So you've composed a superb string section for your composition, but you have no idea what to do with the woodwinds and the brasses. Well, in a moment, I'll show you how to change this. To this. So like you know, I like to say that the strings are the core of the orchestra and then you have the woodwinds who add a lot of color and air to your sound. And on the other side, the brasses can add some brightness, some power, but even some warmth to your sound. Now in this video, I'll show you how to get a full tutti sound. That means where everybody's playing. This is not necessarily the orchestration you need for all of your music, but certainly for the most epic and important moments of your music, you need something like this. So I'll show you a few traditional way of using the woodwinds and the brasses so that they can give a new perspective and support your string section. So now let's listen to the excerpt we're going to work on for the full string section first. So as you can see, it's quite dense already. We have the double basses who play quite low, although it's not the lowest they can play. But what's more intense in this section is that we have the main melody divided by three octaves. Two of them are played in DVZ by the first violins, and then the lowest one is played by the upper DVZ of the cellos. So when you see this kind of orchestration, you know that the composer before, in that case, was me, wanted to have the melody be obvious. So you'll need to respect that and dose this as you add other uh, wind instruments. So although the melodic part is quite important in this segment, you also want the bass line to be very strong and stand out. We also see that the cellos are doing arpeggios. We surely can find some instrument that can imitate this, but in some sections, maybe in the brasses, we might do something slightly different, just because it might not be idiomatic for the instruments. So first in the woodwind section, you have four main subgroups, the flutes, the oboes, the clarinets, and the bassoons. Each one of them has a cousin instrument. The flute has the piccolo, which plays an octave higher, the oboe has the English horn, which play a fifth lower. The clarinet has the bass clarinet, who plays an octave lower. And the bassoon has the contrabassoon, who plays an octave lower. So we're going to be composing for all of these. So let's start with our upper group of flutes with the piccolo. So I can already say from the notes we have here, if we're in the context of a non-crystal tutti, so that means where everybody's playing, you'll want to have the flute on the higher pitch. So I believe we can give the upper line of the melody to the flute, but also to the piccolo. The piccolo can play an octave higher than the flute, but adding in another octave higher might make this melody sound much more shrill. If you've seen my other video where I adapt this melody for the strings, you might remember that the original melody was the one from the middle octave we see here. So already to have an octave above is kind of an augmentation. So having the piccolo play at this pitch with the flute, I believe is correct. Now onto the oboe and the English horns. So first I would give the second violins lines to the English horn. And now this is a place where I would start to adding something new. I would double the line an octave above with the oboe. Pairing the oboe and the English horns in octaves is a very natural thing to do because their timbre is similar. Now for my clarinets, we're gonna use the viola line. The viola line will be played by the second clarinet, and now we're going to use the octave above to be played by the first clarinet. So with the oboe and the clarinet, we both added octaves above. This will make sure that the intermediate lines will be heard as well. Since the melody is doubled at three octaves, kind of need to balance it that way. Afterwards, we have the bass clarinet, and well, the bass clarinet will simply do the lowest cello line, but also with the bassoons. Bass clarinet and bassoons pretty much have the same register. And what's interesting with the clarinets is that you can really pair it well with the higher clarinets, but also with the lowest section of the woodwinds. Now finally, the double bass part, which are the low half notes, will be played by the contrabassoon. Now let's quickly hear this excerpt. Let's take off the strings and only listen to the woodwind section. Now that this is done, let's go on to the brasses. The brasses are made of horns, trumpets, trombones, and a tuba. So there's usually four horns 
big orchestras, there's three trumpets and three trombones and one tuba, and they all have a specific role. We could go from the bottom up. We have the tuba, which is basically a double bass. It really has the kind of same sound. It can carry the whole brass section and can even really, really support the rest of the orchestra as well. Now, since this part is not too low, we can add in the third trombone as well, doing this lowest line. And now for the first and second trombone, we want them to do the same thing as the cello, but they cannot really do these arpeggios without it being too noticeable. So we'll actually need to write a new line for these. So you can see in the lowest stave, there's a new line. We have mainly the main notes from the double bass. I put it an octave higher. And then every third beat, I added in another note from the chord. This will move nicely with the cello and it will fill again, maybe a gap if you see between the cello and the viola on the first beat, there's two octaves there. With only the strings, this might be okay. But since we have a whole orchestra, it's time to fill in the gaps. Now let's move up to the trumpets. If you remember earlier, our first clarinet included an higher octave, which was not there before. So I think I want to support this one with my first trumpet. Now for the second and third trumpets, I want to go and support the lowest line of the melody. The one presented by only half of the cellos. We didn't really have anybody else to support quite yet. And this leads me to the horns now. So we have four horns, but I'm gonna ask them to share two lines. So the first and second horns will play the viola line. It's a great register for the horns and it does really need some support. And finally, I think that our melody could be a little bit more supported in its lower octaves with the cello and the second and third trumpets. So I'm gonna add in the third and fourth horn on that as well. So now let's again take off the strings. We take off the woodwinds. We just focus on the horn section and see how it sounds. Now again, only the woodwinds. And finally, the whole section together. So notice that what I did here is that there's none of the five lines presented by the string orchestra that are not supported by other instruments. You just need to find the right instrument for the register presented in the part. Now this is again the most orchestration you're gonna be doing. This is the place where there's a 2T, everybody's playing together, it's gonna be loud, it's gonna be powerful, but it might be a mistake to approach orchestration always this way. I have quite a lengthy video where I go through the whole process of orchestrating a piano piece, and I invite you to go and see this video, and you know what I mean.